first bit of information they're going to have over their opponent's deck. Yeah, for sure. And but you also, Leo, may you recognize Bennett from the, because uh, he was on stream at Bokum, might be expecting hey. EA Tempo. But yeah, you're absolutely right. That hidden code put in, could put in a lot of work. But Bennett might have the answers to it. This deck typically runs things like Painting the Roses Red, which yeah. minus strength from characters to get them into that range. But we know he is playing because he's holding the legendary Kida, which does get inked. And we see the Diablo revealing Leo's hand. Yeah, and the Baboom is a big problem for Diablo often. But one thing that this deck can do really well, Bennett doesn't have it available right now, but if you have Bare Necessities in hand, you can shift in Diablo, sing Bare Necessities, and just discard that yep. Baboom. That's one of the most powerful tools that you have as an Emerald Amber player, and why a big reason Diablo is so nice in this deck. That ability to sing Bare Necessities is very unique to this color combination. Yeah, it sounds super strong, and I, uh, Bennett did ink that key, so he has revealed both of his colors to Leo, who's yep. going to bring down the Squirrel Squeak Tutor. Yeah, Bennett, I'm sure, has played against a lot of Buckies in their time. And it is definitely a matchup which looks great for Emerald Amber on paper. As I've mentioned, the Hidden Cove can be a problem. And the other big issue potentially is Leo playing Ursula Deceiver and discarding Bennett's Under the Sea. I don't know Bennett's exact list, but it's usually three copies of Under the Sea. Four can often feel like too many. You never want two copies of that in your hand. Yep. And Ariel, of course, is, is a tutor for the card potentially. So I'm really excited to see Emerald Amber. Yeah, I, I, I did ask if we could fire, if, nice. if there was ever a time, can we see some Emerald Amber today? Because I honestly think it is a deck that is going to be very strong going into the next format. I very much agree. In fact, I'll even cut, kind of alter that. I think it's already been stronger than people have realized. And we do see Diablo shifting in. What's interesting is Bennett knows that there's a Baboom in Leo's hand. However, still goes for the shift play. They're going to draw once. Yep. And then also... What they're, what they're doing is they're kind of forcing Leo to take yes. turn three yes. to Baboom. Instead of playing a Floodborne like Diablo, they're really slowing down their own game plan in order to answer Bennett's own Diablo, which is a really interesting play. Yeah, no, you've hit the Devoted Herald on the head. Uh, if he plays Baboom, he's not going to be able to extend and start making Bennett discard, and that is what he does. Obviously, it's never nice to have your Diablo taken yeah. away, but like you said, Bennett drew one card off of it, and he forced Leo to play a far more passive turn. And I think if Bennett, the longer the game goes on, I think it benefits Bennett more if he can build up to that under the sea, which will probably take out nearly all of Leo's board, especially if combined with Kida or Painting the Roses Red. Now, Baker, I am guilty of times of saying my favorite card in the game. Go on. But... I think it's got to go to Prince John. This I, card is tremendous. If for what it's worth, I, it's the card I consider with you, associate yeah. with you the most. I just love it. Oh, and Fried Tuck. Yeah, I'm Fried Tuck. <laughs> go on, say it for you us. Do you see, say it for us. There you go. You see the, uh, the Diablo come down, Prince John discarded, so there was two in hand. Of course, it's uninkable. Of course. Nice to put into the inkwell. The Sir Hiss is evasive, and Prince John has ward, so it can't be targeted by any of Leo's cards. So most likely, Bennett's just going to be leaving it on the board. Currently, they're at Singer 5 on the board with that Prince John and the Sir Hiss. And Leo's going to be pretty worried about Under the Sea if Bennett can get another character with three cost or more. Of course, Ariel Singer 5 means that Ariel plus Prince John could sing together the Under the Sea. Of course, it's not available right now. Ursula comes through with a Prince John on the board and it misses. It's a huge moment. Yeah. Not only would this be a card discarded by Ursula, but it will be a card drawn for Bennett. Leo's done a great job to mitigate the value of that potential Ursula there. Yeah, no, that's got to feel bad for Bennett. It does still get a bit of information, but yeah, not nowhere near as much of a tempo swing as he was hoping for. He's going to quest with that Sir Hiss, mm. who does have evasive. Yeah. And hey, if Diablo wants to go into it, Bennett's going to be happy with that. I doubt that's going to happen. The Diablo is far more valuable as a playing Piece. We see the inked Jafar Dreadnought. Oh. Down comes the second Bucky, and down Hello. comes the second Diablo, making a double discard from Bennett. That was a big turn. It certainly was. Double discard. Diablo is going to quest. Had the option, of course, challenging Sir Hiss. But, of course, when Bennett's turn starts, they're going to draw, which means then the Diablo is going to draw for Leo. And, interestingly, they currently have seven strength or seven cost on the board so if they had to sing together eight card they wouldn't be able to sing it just the bennett so they're a little bit short and of course being stuck at three ink 
these buckies are going to be very, very difficult to remove from the board without that under the seat access. Yeah, and I don't think Bennett's got the largest hand. I, I think that miss from Ursa Deceiver was a big swing turn. Yep. Uh, absolutely huge. That would have been a plus two for Bennett, taking a card from Leo and drawing a card off of Prince John. But them's the break sometimes. No, certainly. Really love the play from Leo to go for that double Bucky and that Diablo. A very aggressive opening line from Emerald Steel. For sure. It is still Leo's turn. They're just deciding if there's anything else that they can or want to do. Yeah, I don't see this Bucky turning sideways. I think that's far too valuable. We do pass over to Ooh. Bennett, who has the Sir Hiss with evasive. They find Kida off the top, the five cost. It's probably just going to be ink straight away, Baker, I would imagine. And of course, ha does have the option of, play of challenging one of the Diablos with Sir Hiss, but there's still going to be another Diablo remaining on the board. Yeah, I think I would probably be uh, interested in taking out one of the Diablos nonetheless. Yeah. But yeah, it's going to immediately be removed. Um, yeah, and that Kida, just as you say, is hitting the ink well. A shame, it like, could have been a nice way to contend the board a bit, but Bennett needs more ink. And again, he would just discard it with Bucky if he held onto it. So yeah, kind of forced into that, but it's not over. Robin Hood found off the top. Beast, tragic hero played down by Leo, who's at five ink. Bennett still at four as the Diablo quest. The Diablo card draw has been really, really nice here for yeah. Leo. Just an abundance of cards available in hand. Big top deck moment. That's not bad. It's not great, though, actually. It, it, you can ink it. You can sing it. It's painting the roses red. So what it does, you can target two of your opponent's characters, lower their strength by one. It is going to be sung by Ursula. So now Beast is two strength, and Diablo is one strength until the end of the turn. But Bennett can also draw a card and finds an Ursula Deceiver. Now, that could be huge. Is there a song? There isn't. Yeah, there, there is. is. There's a long game Zeus. There we go. Okay, huge moment then, because with the discard and Prince John, Bennett is surely not going to forget to draw with the Prince John. Please, Bennett, do not forget to draw with the Prince John Bennett. Of course, discarding a card with Ursula, Prince John down on the board. You're on the main stage. Oh, thank goodness, Baker. He remembered. I was getting very nervous. <laughs> I think maybe in his head he was wondering if he wanted to not draw because he didn't want to discard it from Bucky, but yep. it makes sense to draw win because you can still ink. So yep. only really would have been punished if he drew an uninkable that he couldn't play. Yeah. Currently, Bennett has Sing Together 7 available on the board, so still not threatening a under-the-sea top deck and not being able to play yet. it instantly. And that could be game-changing, although Leo has built up a really nice hand. Yeah. So unfortunately, if Bennett is able to wash away this current uh, field, Leo's looking like he's going to be able to immediately re-establish. We've got a couple of copies of Robin Hood, Flynn Rider, Ursa Deceiver of all. Yeah, Bennett's got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, and I want to go back to this line of the double Bucky Diablo. It was such a good play. Five ink available. Yep. Could have just played something like a beast, but instead that second Bucky in Diablo, really, really impressive. Let the Storm Rage on. Going to sink two damage counters into Ursula Deceiver. And of course, it costs nothing at all being able to sing it with Diablo. Six ink now available. And it's going to be a Flynn Rider for four. That is a Floodborne. Nothing to discard, though, for poor Bennett. Oh, but it does put a clock on this game because that Flynn Rider, while Bennett doesn't have any cards in his hand, is questing for four, which it can just close the game in a couple of turns. So, yeah, again, the pressure is now on to Bennett to try and find a way to equalize this board. Yeah, and here is the card I talked about, which can be a real problem for Emerald Amber. Even with an Under the Sea, finds a hidden cove of their own Bennett, which is really interesting. Probably not the card you're looking for at this moment in time. It's certainly not a card you see every day in these Emerald Amber decks. More of a card that you see in Emerald Steel. It's a very nice card, Hidden Cove, but not what you're wanting at this moment in time if you've been it. Something like an Aerial could have really opened up the yeah. game. Yeah, it's an aerial to potentially find the under the sea. And again, then you'd have enough characters on board. But Bennett hasn't been able to find her. And yeah, this cove, I can imagine there are situations where it helps. Maybe putting the Prince John there yeah, so he definitely. doesn't fall to grab swords and other interactions. But yeah. Bring your, da your own Diablo in there as well against yeah. Ruby decks. Yep, yep, but yep, Bennett yep. decides to go next. And that is the, my concern with Emerald Amber as a deck. As strong as it looks, this matchup on paper, you really see Leo just knew how to deal with it. That Bucky plus yep. Diablo on turn five. Yep. 
was devastating. Yeah. Double Bucky discard. It was aerial and something else, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Bucky into the second. Yeah, oh, for the discard. Yeah, yeah, yeah aerial yeah, yeah, got sorry. discarded. It was discarded. Apologies. And something else. Yeah. Two cards discarded is a big deal. We also saw a Prince John get discarded a little bit earlier on. From and the, the Ursula miss with that Prince John, yeah. I think, was big as well. Just upset the tempo swing. But Bennett choosing to go day in game two. I do think you're right. But at the same time, I think a lot went right for the Bucky deck. Yep, that's I think definitely a lot, true. And I think a lot went wrong for Bennett. Like, if he'd have been able to find something like the Muses there, yeah. that could have been really good to um, upset the tempo. A yeah, most bit. definitely. But we'll see how it goes in this game. Do you remember who went first game one? I don't have a clue. Okay, we'll find out very shortly. It will be uh, who, whoever didn't go first will be going first now. And there we see... 31 points. That is a lot of points. So we're currently in round six. This is the start of the sixth round. So we've had five rounds. So that's four two O's and one 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 one. Very impressive. It's really, really good. You're looking for around 44, 45 points in day one yep. to make it through to day two. But because of the the way the point scoring system works, there is no like magic safe number. There's, you know, you know the ballpark, like I say, that kind of 44, 45 point mark. Uh -huh. But you just want to get as many points as possible because the higher, the more points you get, the higher seed you'll be in day two. And the higher seed you are, the more opportunity opportunities you're going to have to go first yes. in day two which is very very important we saw in fort worth the top the first and second seed made it through to the final which i think is very uncommon i don't expect that to happen again but yeah, definitely playing for the highest seed is is very valuable. Yeah, no, I think I remember like listening, so watching some of those players talk about it online and saying, yeah, oh, absolutely, getting to go first for nearly all of my mm. games in Top Cut was absolutely a, a a factor. So yeah, it is a nice way to motivate players to keep playing throughout the entire game because you can reach a point where you've got enough points that you can pretty much lock in. But some players are like, it's not good enough. I want to go first every game. So we'll see how Bennett gets on this time, round six of the DLC Bologna. Can Bennett bring this to a one-all? We shall see. Hey, Bennett's got a copy of Strike a Good Match in the hand, which is not a card you see that often in these Amber Emerald deck. And Bennett is going first this time. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, it's a really interesting card because with the Muses, for example, just a card which is replacing itself, you draw two and discard one. Yep. And of course, because you're playing a card from hand yourself, you're essentially getting rid of two cards from hand to draw two. But with something like the Muses, really good you have extra benefit from the ability plus yep. it's just thinning through the deck helping us find the pieces that we need like you say the under the sea can quite often feel like the the deck can kind of live or die by yep. that card so with, with strike a good it. match you might even be able to get that fourth under the sea in there because it's yeah. uninkable yeah you can get rid of your uninkables uh, also just improving the odds on the area when i when i played the deck myself i was also rocking strike a good match it's not something we've seen in a, in a DLC challenge, no. but I definitely am intrigued by, by the selection. It seems like a pretty reasonable option. Yeah, no, I like the Fort Trail. We're eyeing up a Robin Hood to potentially make its way into the Inkwell. The champion of Sherwood does indeed get inked, and down comes Diablo. We're going to take a peek at Bennett's hand. We've got a sudden chill, two Diablos, a hidden cove, strike a good match, and painting the rose is red. Yeah, three different songs available, two Diablos and a location as well. Leo are going to be testing their memory to see how well they can remember that. I'm not great with those kinds of things. <laughs> and it was a Diablo draw, and the one cost Diablo, that is, for Bennett. Oh, that's pretty nice. They probably would have preferred that a turn sooner. Yeah, 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 100%. But if they do want to take that shift line, then that is now open to them from their next turn. If they play the one drop this turn, which they do. Goes for it. We see that hand on Leo's side. Very good. Thank you for laying out your hand. We've got yeah. the Sea Revol, Sudden Chill, Hidden Cove, Bucky, Diablo, and Grab Your Swords. The Grab Your Swords is definitely really good information for Bennett. We saw that Ursula Deceiver miss yep. songs, but as an uninkable song, it's going to be very difficult for Leo to get rid of that anytime soon. Yep, so if true. Bennett can kind of get that same sort of board with Prince John and then an Ursula on turn four, it could be really impactful as the Hidden Cove enters the field for Bennett. Yeah, 100%. And there's another Diablo off the top. He was already holding one, though. And I imagine this shift line will be something he will consider. More likely to discard the... Um Oh, it would have to be the Sudden Chill. That's the only other action beside Grab Your Swords. But I think he wants to ink the Sudden Chill. Yeah, it does seem like Sudden Chill is the card going to be inked. Leo's thinking about it. And that is a really interesting option, is it? Being able to discard that uninkable song of yours. Yeah. 
Especially if you're worried about Prince John, like you say, and don't want them to gain tempo. We do see the Bucky come down. So yeah, this is where he's going to consider just taking that shift line. And does he want to hold on to the grab your swords or not? That is the question. Yeah, the shift just looks too tempting to say no to, really. Agreed. You're getting that instant Bucky discard. You're guaranteed card draw off Diablo. But Leo decides otherwise. Really fascinating. Respecting perhaps the counterplay that Bennett maybe is threatening and just doesn't want to discard that grab your sword just yet, valuing it more in hand. Maybe they might top deck a different action card, which they're more happy to discard. Yeah, I mean, again, the, the, the grab sword's super good into the things like Prince John and the opposing Diablos, but again, Bennett has a hidden cove on the board, so it wouldn't be too hard for him to, to move something there and protect it, so I, I respect it. I probably would have taken the shift line, but, yeah. I can, I, but I can respect what Leo's going for there and just prioritize, like, valuing this grab your swords. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think, like, the shift is the obvious line, right, whereas Leo is the, on the main stage for a reason. They yeah, know yeah, more than yeah. we do. I think it's you fair are, to say so you are right sir it's really fun with like seeing these kinds of plays which you, they do players do something you don't expect similar yeah. to the game we cast earlier where the player had five ink available and just didn't play anything and yeah. passed it's those kinds of situations where you really see the skill expression but and maybe that's why look the diablo in the hidden cove now if leo had shifted in their diablo then bennett's own diablo in hidden cove could have traded it out yep. and that is the big brain play from leo not to take the shift we both would have done yep yeah that's it's paid off for him 100 percent he's still going to draw a card off of leo drawing but yeah leo has the, has the answers here and that bucky's still just sitting there saying play a floodborne i'll yeah. take one of his cards and again the Hidden Cove is a card I talked about from Benin. Not something you see all the time, but you see the power of it in this matchup as well. Yep. Really, really interesting. But there is the Diablo now, discarding the Grab Your Swords and shifting in for no cost at all. Bennett is going to discard bare necessities from their hand. They have Painting the Roses Red and another Diablo still in their hand. Leo has all their ink still to play for as Ursula Deceiver gets inked. A Hidden Cove of Leos and the Diablo is going to move in. Will Bucky as well. One ink still left. It certainly will. Yeah, we got Diablo chilling at a cove on both sides of the field, but Leo's obviously also got that Squirrel Squeak Tutor. And yeah, this is interesting. Like, who's going to break first and decide that they want to be the one to make this trade? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to depend on who can, gets more off of this Diablo, really. Yeah, so Leo decides to quest, it seems. Obviously, there is also the option of challenging the Hidden Cove. Could challenge the Diablo. Doesn't make that much sense to trade, does it, Baker? Because if you take the, the trade, you're stopping yourself drawing cards Absolutely. on your opponent's turn. So Yeah, I would look to just to get the two strength on this Diablo um, from, from Grab Swords or something and then just take up the Cove. Yep. Okay, Painting the Roses Red could be huge here, Baker, because Painting the Roses Red can lower the strength of Diablo, and it will, meaning that it's now a two-strength character, and therefore nice. Bennett's Diablo could remove it and remain on the it board. Does. It's incredible. That's a fantastic move, taking two damage still. So as soon as that Hidden Cove is removed from Bennett's side of the field, then it will go. But for now, that was a beautiful trade. And the text on Painting the Rose is red. I'm having to squint to see it. It's up to two up to chosen two. characters. Yep, yep. So it wasn't... Bennett didn't have to choose their own Diablo. Of course, Bucky not an option. They can just choose one of Leo's characters. Yep. Painting the Rose is red. Hidden Cove Diablo combo as Ursula Deceiver gets inked and Ursula Deceiver gets played. Ooh. Strength of a Raging Fire discarded and Bennett has had an amazing turn there. Yeah, that was a real tempo swing and getting rid of that Strength of a Raging Fire, leaving Leo uh, far fewer options to deal with the opposing Diablo. Yeah, really strong play. And I like the fact that you um, zoned in on the uh, Paint the Roses red. It does say up to two. Mm. If it said two, he would have been forced yep. to also do it to his Diablo. So I think that's really important. Pay attention to the wording on cards. It makes a big difference. That's my favorite player of the tournament so far, Baker. Yep. That was an amazing turn from Bennett. Yep, I respect it. This Hidden Cove putting in a lot of work. I think probably our second most influential location in Lorgana so yep. far. And we see Diablo coming in with Bucky down on the board. That's another discard for Bennett. Ursula uh, so Deceiver gets discarded. You Have Forgotten Me has just been drawn by Bennett. No way. And that is a four-cost action, which discards two cards from your opponent's hand. Is holding two? Four ink available and four and two cards in Leo's hand. Yeah, we do see it. Mufasa oh. is going to open the skies and speak, you have forgotten me, and discard two cards, please, if you would. 
Really, really nice play from Bennett. The last card they have in hand is a Diablo. Of course, if Leo is to top deck a Floodborne... It would be gone. Yeah. Having said that, Bennett's going to draw for their own Diablo. They draw into We Don't Talk About Bruno, and it's Zeus for Leo. I do believe it's four ink available. Zeus can target locations as well. This Hidden Cove has three damage on it as well. I believe it's four willpower, or is it five willpower? No, it might actually be six. Six. Like, hey, six. Oh, God. Good, good God. That's a, that's a good location. Yeah. Yeah, so... The Diablo is going to be challenging into the Hidden Cove. Then the along came Zeus on the Cove, and that takes out the other Diablo. There's another good play for you, yeah. Joe. <laughs> yeah, so to explain, for those that just don't understand what just happened, the Diablo had two damage counters on it, but because it was at the Hidden Cove, it had that plus one willpower. So it was at three willpower, but when Hidden Cove was removed, it then goes back down to a two willpower character. So those two damage counters remove it from the board. Really no nice need to play. target Diablo if you can just target the cove instead. You're absolutely right, and that's uh, definitely a line that some players, I think, would miss, and it just goes to show the top level of play here, um, just knowing what all, how these cards interact and how best to remove them, and Leo is sat here still with a Bucky and a Diablo both at the cove. Yep. Leo with one card in hand, which they drew from the Diablo, it is a Bucky. On the other side, Bennett with three. They've got Sudden Chill. We don't talk about Bruno and a Diablo of their own. Four ink available. They could, of course, sing the sudden chill with Ursula. That Bucky could be challenged by Ursula to put a damage counter on it for now. And then if they could remove the cove down the line in a similar fashion, that could remove the Bucky. So that's an option for Bennett. Yep. Of course, Diablo is evasive, so can't be targeted. But it could be targeted by we don't talk about Bruno. The problem for Bennett is they're currently at four ink. They could sing Sudden Chill to discard the card in Leo's hand, but then they wouldn't be able to ink the uninkable Diablo to play the We Don't Talk About Bruno. So they're not going to be able to empty their hand in that fashion. That could have been a nice play. Of course, the quicker you can remove the Diablo, the less cards Leo can draw. Yeah. And that's going to be really important to just try and remove that as quickly as possible. Yeah, for sure. Ben, it's done a good job of um, running Leo out of resources and that you have forgotten me a huge swing. Um, but again, if this Diablo can sit there long enough, then he's just going to get all that advantage advantage back. I haven't seen a Muses yet either from Ben. I wonder if he's even playing it. He might not. I imagine he is. Yeah. I like it. It would seem strange to me to not run the Muses. I think there's just so much synergy with this. Agreed. Deck. I think um, a big thing with the Muses is even just the fact that it's four cost with Ward. It really helps you get towards four that. Four willpower, right? Is it four? Yeah, four willpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that four cost with Ward really helps you get under the C value. Ursula is going to sing. Sudden chill. Bye-bye, Bucky. Bye-bye, Bucky. Four in for remaining. Good. It's going to be the Diablo for three. Benny was definitely considering the option of challenging that of challenging that Bucky. Yeah. But he's emptied his hand. Oh, no, he hasn't. He's holding... Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. Okay. One card off the top, and it's a really good card. In fact, it might have been the best card of all. Oh. Let the storm rage on. Sings it with Diablo. Draws another card just for good measure and finds another very good card. It is the Beast Tragic Hero. Do they have five ink available, though? I have a feeling they only have four, Baker. Yeah, that is true. But, yeah, that, that, that's a pretty good top. At the same time, I feel that there are a few answers that that could have been. Like, Storm is normally played in fours. He's running strength for a Raging Fires, but let Storm Rage on in one of the better ones, of course, because it lets us draw a card. But yep. I do think it was, like, good odds to find an out for that Diablo there. Yeah, I agree, but I think that Bennett was not happy at all oh. to see that, that's oh, for sure. No, 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 no. I certainly wouldn't have been. We've got a Strength and a Beast in Leo's hand and a Kida, and we don't talk about Bruno in Bennett's. And both players on one and throw one law from Bennett, three from Leo. This has been a game of just kind of ruling supremacy of the board and hand before actually trying to chase your win condition. Yeah, and just kind of looking at the body language as well. Bennett is feeling a little bit deflated at this moment in time, I think. So Bruno is going to roll and select a card at random from the hand to be discarded. And it's a very good one. And suddenly Bennett's body language just shifts a little bit. OK, yep. maybe I've got a little bit of a chance that Diablo back in Leo's hand is going to mean that the card draw is going to stop. And now we see the Ursula challenging that Bucky in the cove. So if Bennett can remove the cove, the Bucky will go as well. Look at this play, though. They could go for the Diablo, shift Diablo, discard the uh, strength. Oh, no. But instead, they just play the Diablo and ink the, the one-cost Diablo. Moving it into the cove. 
helping them play around. I think that makes sense. The strength could be a really yeah. important oh, piece. Oh, hello. Let's Aerial off the top for Bennett is exactly what you want at this moment in time. Aerial, do not miss it. Sir Hiss, Bruno is found. Two copies of Bruno as the options. A huge moment. Bennett not wanting to miss with that aerial. Yeah. But with Bucky down on the board, do you ink the Bruno or do you risk it, Baker, and hold on to it? It's a big decision. I'm holding it personally, but I think there's a strong argument either way. Like, yeah. I could understand airing on the side of caution, but yeah, you're right. That spectacular singer aerial, a great card off the top. Uh, also found another aerial, which is now at the bottom yeah. of the deck, but there'll be at least two more. I expect he's running. Big moment off the top. It's a floodborn. <sighs> So I'd, it have, I'd it. have been punished. I'd have been punished. <laughs> I think they had to take the risk, but it's not paid off in this case. No. The Diablo off the top forces Bennett to discard the Bruno. Leo knew what it was, of course. Ariel reveals the song card put into the hand. Uh. I think Diablo's also moved into the cove. It's another aerial, though. We've been here before. <gasps> Hello, Under the Sea. It's Under the Sea, Mother Knows Best, or Sudden Chill. Now, the problem with Under the Sea is Bennett with Ariel and Ursula on the board only has Singer 7. Under the Sea is Singer 8. Yep. And, of course, with the Cove on the board, they're not putting in that much work either. So it's a pretty tricky decision here for Bennett. Daisy Duck's in the I was, ju I was, I was just going to say, mate, your friend's at the back there, Daisy Duck. I do love a bit of Daisy Duck. <laughs> You just love a bit of discard, mate. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's certainly true. Yeah, this under the sea, such a strong card, but just has it. We haven't been able to show the potential of it yeah. so far in this particular matchup. And it's just not had the board of singers that he needs. Um, it's just been a game of Diablo. Both players trying yeah. to be the one that lets their Diablo stick and starts getting them to that, that card draw. And then you've got to uh, imagine they'll reach a point where they'll just turn on the gas and go, OK, now I can start questing for game and hopefully get there in a few turns. But yeah, it's been close. I really respect the way the players have made their moves here. Leo is going to crest for two, inking the one cost Diablo as well. So they're now at six ink, something like a Tinkerbell off the top would now be playable. Be nice. And of course, they're drawing two cards here, Leo, so makes sense to take that ink. Cricky, Cricky is a very nice option. I love that. I think I'm in boosting fact, the aerial. That could have been one of the best cove. finds. I think I'm going into Cove here. Yeah, so Ariel now has five strength for the rest of the turn. Cricky giving it some extra strength. Could challenge the Cove, which removes the Cove, nice. and of course, removes the Bucky as well. Super good move. And this Cricky having three lore is really good. And four willpower. Leo's not going to tra double trade with Diablos. I very much Aker. Oh, Go on, go on. What's he got? It's a big moment because Bennett has that under the sea active. Yep. Singer eight available. But Leo knows it's there and has two ways of getting rid of it. Ursula oh, the Deceiver. Oh, the heartbreak. <laughs> the absolute heartbreak. As you said, he Anna had that on line. But could find it off the top, Baker. Yep. I believe. Under the sea, off the top right now, keeps Bennett See, in he's always this greener. game. No, it's not. It's a sudden <laughs> chill. <laughs> it's a sudden chill. you got to try. you got to build the hype, right? <laughs> so at this point, Bennett might have to just decide, OK, maybe my best bet is that I find under the sea next turn. And therefore, if I exert either my aerial or cricky, I might lose the potential to sing under the sea. So decides to just ink the sudden chill. Not giving up just yet, because that under the sea off the top could still save the day. Yep, it could be a thing. We've got a Tink and Ursa Sea Revol and a Strength in a Leo's hand. Down comes that Tinker Bell paying six. Gonna put one spread damage on everything. And oh. strength removes the cricky, and suddenly, oh. even an under the sea off the top would not be enough for Bennett. Only Singer five, and I think six ink. Oh. Of course, eight singers or singer eight or eight ink needed to play under the sea. My seaweed dreams are over. And it's sudden chill again oh. for Bennett. Oh, it's Sir Hiss. Oh, it's Sir Hiss. Okay. I was going to say, instant, like, if he had a Prince John, yeah. like, these would be great, great tops. Absolutely. Uh, but in this instant, it's not what he needs. The Sir Hiss is okay. At least that's going to be able to take out a Diablo next turn. But Leo's at 11 lore all of a sudden, and he's got two characters that quest for two. So it's two, four, five, six, seven lore on, <laughs> on board. Yeah, we see the quest with everything from Leo. Bouncing that law counter up significantly, just doing all the maths on that. It's going to be a big, big jump. 
My heart goes out for Bennett. Uh, Le Leo's played this game brilliantly, yeah, no doubt at all. But Bennett just seems to keep missing what he needs. Yeah, and Leo finding that floodborne at the right moment as they just flood the board with more. <laughs> Pun intended. There is a flood. And it's a there. GG. Leo takes it with two wins, seven more points. It was great to see Amber Emerald, but it got taken down by Emerald Steel.